Hello, and thanks for joining me for my tutorial for a 10 minute quick get ready for the office look. Um, this tutorial is probably going to go on for longer than 10 minutes, but it's going to show you how to create a look that you can wear in the office um, and that you don't have to spend a lot of time learning, putting together. So let's get right to it. So the first thing that we want to do is take our primer. So I'm using Too Faced Shadow Insurance. And I already started putting a little bit on my under eye, and you want to put just a little bit on, um, enough to kind of create a thin layer of coverage. The next thing that I usually do is I try to highlight my brow area to make sure that whatever eyeshadow you're using really pops out. So one way you can do this is actually by just taking the concealer that you're going to be using. So I'm using it. It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. Right? And I put just a little bit of that on the back of my hand. If I really want to take and make a dramatic effect, I can use Highbrow um, by Benefit, and it's a Highbrow Glow. So this is actually the shimmery version of it. There's also a matte version. Um, and you could just kind of put that if you want to on the brow to add a little bit of shimmer. Of course, it's totally optional. I'm going to pick a palette that's pretty neutral and that has matte shades um, because you don't really want to have a sparkly eye at the office. So as you can see, the Naked palette here, the Naked Basics, has just a few of these shades, um, these neutral shades that you're going to use. And the first shade that you're going to be using is either one of these three fur shades, which are going to be right for your brow area. And you want to take a flat, so this is kind of like a flat brush so that you can pack the color onto your brow. Take, I'm going to be using Venus. And you can just put Venus all along the brow bone and your lid area. So once we have that, um, the next thing that you want to do is get your crease color on. So what I like to do is I'll take a medium shadow brush. Here I have one from Coastal Suns and it's just like their medium dome brush and I've been using it as you can see for other things. In order to give me a little bit more control over where the color goes in my crease, because sometimes if you get it below this line, then you're going to look a little bit raccoony. Um, and so I'm going to take a color, I'm going to take Naked 2, or you, depending on your skin color, you can take Naked 2 or Faint, or how dramatic you want the look to be. So I'm going to take Naked 2, and I'm going to take this little tool from e.l.f., um, which is like, you can get it at Target, and it basically acts as a little buffer area so that you don't go below that area. And you can just take your brush, buff, buff, You buff that color out. So as you can see, this is a very, very subtle color. I like to really make sure that I go up into this area of my brow to make sure that my eyes really get a pop, really get a lift. Another thing that I would suggest is you take the color that you used on your brow and you want to make sure you go over your lid with that color. For me, it was Venus, and that will keep sort of like the lightness of that area. I don't mind if things are a little bit like below this line, um, because then I can kind of see it a little bit more buffered. Um, but the next thing that you want to do is part the nature of the look as well.
the cream. And if you have sort of like a stray mark, such as that, I have this little magic tool that I like to use a lot from e.l.f., which is the makeup remover pen. Yes, there it is. And then I just can go over that area with the makeup remover pen and it takes out the product. It also might take off some of your eyeshadow, unfortunately, and you'd have to reapply it wherever you took it off. Um, another trick that you can use to remove stray marks from your eyeshadow is to take a spoolie and I will show that when I inevitably get mascara on my eyelids I will use my spoolie to sort of brush that off um, so that there are no stray mascara marks on my eyes. Um, but before we go into the mascara one of the important tips that I want to tell you about is to make sure that you put your concealer on before go on to your mascara because you don't want to um, you don't want to smudge your mascara into your eye and not be able to fix that. So we're going to put a little bit of the concealer, again the Bye Bye Under Eye for me. Um, and then I'm going to take a wet beauty blender sponge and really blend that in. It's important that the beauty blender sponge be wet or else it will not blend a darn thing. It's just sm when you put the little dot on the back of your hand to use it as your palette you're just gonna smudge it against your hand to warm it up and sort of get it ready to be placed under your eye. And another thing that I like to do is take my eyebrow glow and just go ahead and put that in the inner corner. Put on our mascara. So I use Dior Show Over Curl. I've been using now for a while because I don't feel like I have to use multiple mascaras with this. It's one stop shop for me, which is very rare. So you just want to put that on in as usual. Any clumps on your mascara, you can buy a very good eyelash comb. Here I have my Tweezerman Boom Lash Comb. And it's got thick metal brush things. It would really help to separate out any clumps you may have, especially if you have leftover mascara from the day before or anything like that. Um, and so as promised, here's my spoolie, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to use that to remove any stray mascara marks without compromising the integrity of my shadow, my eyeshadow. Take my companion rattle cage L'Oreal True Match, and just place teensy weensy bit back of my hand but it's not a teensy weensy bit it's a lot of bit and then I'm going to take my flat buffer brush from Sigma and just get a little bit of that in my hands all throughout my face just working little strokes And if you were to have any blemishes or any discoloration or pimples or any areas that you are going to have problems just covering up with a light touch of foundation, then you can use your concealer before doing this, of course, to cover those areas up and pat them down with the beauty blender, as discussed. So now you can see just how shiny. 
Well, you can see that it's looking. Um, and in that case, you just need to set that, and I use my Real Techniques setting brush. Um, and then I take my Bare Minerals Mineral Veil, but you can use any sort of setting powder of HD, whatever you prefer, because it's only really going to go um, underneath my eyes. You just want to pat a little teeny bit underneath there to mattify the area and to set it so that it doesn't move around during the day. And I'm actually going to work on my eyebrows before I move on to my cheeks. So I brushed out my eyebrows with a spoolie. Just a random spoolie you can buy at Target. Or sometimes it comes in the back of your Anastasia brow pencil, which I'm going to use. Today, its brow is. Um, it used to have a spoolie in the back, but it broke off, unfortunately. So you just kind of quickly want to go over the areas of sparseness that you may see to create an even outline of your brow. Or if it kind of looks kooky, you can even brush it out in just a moment. You kind of have an outline there of what your brow looks like. You can do it as thick as you want, as dramatic as you want. Or not. I like to make sure that I have a uniform area. And then I'm going to take my spoolie and brush that out to brush out any of the harsh lines that are created by my brow pencil. And I should, inc I should say that I have very thick eyebrows, as you can see. If you have sparse eyebrows, I recommend getting um, some brow powder. So you're an Anastasia brow powder duo in dark brown. And you essentially just want to take the lighter shade and kind of fill in this front area any sparseness that you need to fill in. So you're going to do it with an angled brush. And the dark, dark color you can use to get the tail end of this area. And if you do not want to buy this, totally fine. You can use your eyeshadow, the dark colors of your eyeshadow. Um, and in from any neutral palette. No magic to the brow powder, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, so now we are going to do the final steps of this look, which you could, if you really have oily skin, I have dry skin, so I do not have this problem, but if you want to set your foundation, you can take any sort of like powder brush and take your mineral veil or whatever other setting powder you have and just lightly go over. Set. set your foundation. You can skip the step if you want to, like I usually do. And then head straight into your bronzer, which I use to base to shuffle the soleil in medium and deep. Um, which kind of looks like this. It smells like chocolate wonderfulness. And then I take my contouring brush, which is my small contouring brush from Sigma, and just put some on your brush, tap, tap. And you're going to come in from this area, so right where your jawline begins. more and go over this C area just like that. And then I'm going to take my real techniques is actually a blush brush. It wasn't a setting brush, but that's all I had on hand. Um, and you're going to take a splash brush, and I either use one of two things. 
if I'm looking for a very matte, matte finish, I use my Tarte Amazonian Clay. And this one is in Fearless. Or, recently I picked up the um, Sweethearts blush from Too Faced. If you want something that's like a little bit more shiny, which I tend to like, and I think it makes me look more tan. I'm fooling myself, that could be it. Uh, but this one, yes, it's in Sweethearts. Something About Berry is the name of the blush. So we're going to take some of this blush, tap off the excess, put it on the apples of your cheeks, and make sure not to get too, too close to your nose, because then it kind of looks weird. And now put it on your cheeks, and then I also do a little dash on my nose, and a little bit on my forehead. Um, and voila! That's pretty much the look. But most, again, it'll take time and practice to actually length time that it takes you to create this look. Um,